In my initial review of the Zoe XL2411K, I said it's possible to control the monitor's overdrive through a hidden factory menu. And in this video I will show you how to do that and also show how to get a much more gradual control over the diac strength beyond the available high and premium options. I will be using the XL2411K, but you should be able to follow along with other Zoe monitors as well, albeit some things will look a bit different. Now you clearly won't find any of those things I'm going to show you in the user manual and this is not really something Zoe intends the end user to do. So be cautious about which options you change as some options you find in factory and service menus can heavily mess with your monitor. And of course proceed at your own risk. That being said, we need to save the overdrive tuning for last, as assessing the factory menu prevents the deep communication between our PC and the monitor we need in order to get control over the DIAC setting. Customizing DIAC is pretty straightforward and works for most DIAC enabled Zoe models. First, download and install the Blurbuster Strobe Utility from the link in the video description. Now, if you're prone to epilepsy, you should probably not be doing this as starting the program makes UFOs fly all over the screen. However, that makes it pretty easy to fine-tune the strobing configuration with the two available sliders. Let's toggle that off for a moment and select the diag mode we want to configure through the OSD menu first. Now, the first slider, which is labeled Persistence, is the one that changes the strength of the overdrive. For the XL2411K, a setting of 10 is what's labeled premium in the OSD, while high resembles a setting of 1. If we, let's say, find the premium mode a bit too dim, we can easily reconfigure that to a setting like 5 for instance, which gives us 168 nits instead of 129. You can of course configure that however you want, just close the application when you're done and the setting will be stored permanently until you do a full reset of your monitor. You can ignore the second slider for now, but it is useful if your monitor shows crosstalk artifacts in the middle of the screen. By using the slider you can push those towards the bottom and the top of the screen where they are far less distracting. But the XL2411K is tuned pretty well out of the box so there isn't anything to fix. Let's close that and move on to customizing the AMA setting. To assess the overdrive gain control we need to turn off the monitor first. Then press and keep pressing the directional toggle or turning the monitor on. When the image appears we can press the toggle again and a little blue menu pops up. Other zone monitors require different button combinations and have slightly different looking factory menus. I put some other combinations for popular models on the screen that Falkentine from the Blurbusters forum put together. Now navigating down brings us to the gain setting, which we can adjust from 0 to 15 with this particular model. Above you will find the OD option which can be turned on and off with on being equivalent to setting AMA to the high mode in the normal OSD menu. By the way, you can switch from the factory menu to the OSD menu by toggling left twice. Pressing the toggle opens up the factory menu again. Now it's time to open up the trusty UFO test while adjusting the gain. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Essentially we need to adjust the gain so that the smearing behind the UFO disappears. Though the gain value we can adjust in the factory menu works differently depending on which AMA and DIAC mode you have selected in the OSD menu. For DIAC OFF start with AMA set to high. A gain value of around 6 should work great. This gives us the much needed middle ground between AMA OFF and high. For DIAC set to high I found values around 7 to be pretty much spot on. Let me know which values work best for you. Now unfortunately the gain adjustment will be lost when the monitor goes to standby, is turned off or when changing presets. It really doesn't take long to launch into the factory menu and quickly change the gain value once you've found the perfect value, but it's a bit annoying nevertheless. If anyone manages to find out how to permanently adjust the overdrive gain, please let me know. I wish Zoe would just make this available from the regular OSD menu. Anyway, thanks for watching and consider to subscribe.